For more than four billion years, rivers have flowed across the surface of Earth, changing the landscape on their journey from the mountains to the sea. Slowly, over vast amounts of geologic time, the erosive power of rivers has carved spectacular features on Earth's surface, such as the Grand Canyon. Rivers like the Mississippi have transported sediments hundreds, even thousands of kilometers to create depositional features like the Mississippi River Delta. How do rivers move and change over time, and how do they modify the landscapes they flow through? Rivers always seem to be changing. When input into a river is low, the river may appear calm and tranquil. But when input is high, for example after a large rainstorm or a hurricane, a river can quickly change to a raging torrent in flood stage. During floods, the input to the river exceeds the river's output capacity, and the water level in the river overtops the banks onto the floodplain, the flat region adjacent to the river channel. Floodplains are critical to healthy river systems because, as their name implies, they help regulate floodwaters. Water on the floodplain slowly percolates into the sediments, which reduces the amount of water that flows back into the river during the flood. As water leaves the river channel and inundates the floodplain, friction between the floodwater and the riverbank slows the water's flow locally. This causes sediment in the floodwaters to be deposited and pile up along the banks of the river, creating a feature called a levee. When the floodwaters recede, the levees remain. Natural levees help keep water and sediment in the river channel. Man-made levees, like the ones along the Mississippi River, mimic natural levees in that they also contain floodwaters. You may have heard the phrase, all rivers flow to the sea. Whereas not all rivers make it to the ocean, all rivers do move downslope in an attempt to reach the same elevation as sea level, which scientists call ultimate base level. When the elevation of a river is much higher than ultimate base level, the river tends to downcut or carve into the landscape. However, when rivers are close to base level, they tend to meander back and forth, using their energy for lateral movement instead of downcutting. This creates sweeping bends in the river's course, which produce distinct areas of erosion on the outside of the bend, where flow velocity is high, called cutbanks, and areas of deposition on the inside of bends, where flow is slow, called point bars. When base level changes, this affects the behavior of rivers. If base level drops, such as during an ice age, rivers that were once close to base level elevation will now begin to downcut. A nick point, and sometimes a waterfall, forms where the river drops to its new elevation. These nick points migrate inland over time as the river continues to downcut and abandon its old floodplains. The abandoned floodplains that are now above the present river channel are called terraces. By studying terraces and their ages, geologists can determine the history of a river and how it may have responded to changes in base level through time. 